If you're not here to learn how to have the best start to Hell Let Loose and how to enjoy Hell Let Loose to its fullest extent, then I don't know why you clicked on this video because today I'm gonna be telling you exactly how to play Hell Let Loose and it's for you beginners. How's it going everybody? My name is Magneti and I welcome you to the mothership. We're gonna be starting off with number one here, understanding the basics, okay? Now, if you have played the game before, you could probably skip this part and move on to number two. So, understanding the basics. The main premise of Hell Let Loose is that it's a World War II realism shooter. There's two major game modes and there's about like 13 roles in Hell Let Loose. Now the time to kill is really quick in this game. Two shots basically and you're dead. Most of the time it's one if it's at chest level or above. There's a lot of different maps. Most of them, if not all of them, are based off of actual World War II battle locations. The two game modes are warfare and offensive. And to just touch on all of the roles real quick here, I'm gonna just briskly read all of them and tell you kind of their main role if it's not already obvious. I'll be going much more in depth into each individual role in number four, as well as the game modes later as well. To correct my previous statement, there is actually 14 roles. However, there's a good handful of them that you're probably not gonna be playing for quite a while, or at least I haven't. So I would assume that you might not. So starting from the top, it's gonna be Commander. That's basically the commander. There's only one. He commands the entire battlefield, gives orders out to everybody, and can call in special, kind of like kill streaks, but they're more like they use form of supply. We don't need to get into it because that's really high level stuff. Next is going to be anti-tank. So anti-tank is obviously its main job is to blow up other tanks. Assault is going to be, they kind of have like a assault rifle. That's kind of the main premise. Their main premise is to engage in medium to short range combat in your squad. You have the automatic rifleman, which is kind of a hash between the machine gunner and the assault class. He has more of like an LMG kind of gun. Next is going to be the engineer. This person's job is going to be to mainly build structures, support structures, defensive structures, offensive structures, etc. Next is going to be the machine gunner. And the machine gunner, like I said earlier, is the top end of the machine gun classes or roles. This guy has a fully automatic, unaimed down sightable machine gun that you can mount to a fence or uh, some sort of support structure and just fucking let shit rip. Next up is Medic, that one's pretty obvious, revive and heal people. Next is Officer, those are going to be your squad leaders, make sure you listen to these guys. Rifleman, this is the role that I suggest you start as, it's a traditional rifleman, you have an ammo box for equipment and a traditional bolt action rifle or slide single fire rifle. Next is going to be support. Now support is going to be a vitally integral role to the engineer. The support directly mainly supports the engineer in building stuff. Now, however, he can support the entire team in other ways, he or she. Next up is going to be crewman. Now that's a tank player. Next after that is the tank commander. That's going to be the squad leader basically for the tank team. After that is going to be the sniper and the spotter. Now those are two players that work together in the recon squad, which can only have two people in it. The tank squad is the crewman and tank commander, which can have three people in it. Now, I'm not going to really be touching on either of those things in this video because I do not believe those to be very beginner type roles or really any type of information that you really need to know. All right, rolling into number two here, we're going to talk about getting started. So I'm going to explain the basic mechanics of the game, my personal best role to start as, and what it looks like to win, okay? So the basic mechanics, you should know that there's leaning, default controls are going to be E and Q, and I, I've remapped my entire keyboard, so I'm terribly sorry if that's wrong. However, I would have a very strong guess that Q and E would be the default settings to lean. Respawning, now that is very unique in this game if you've ever played any other first person shooter game. Respawning only works on garrisons and outposts. Now those are placed by players, okay? There is no other way to spawn except for in the HQ, which isn't placed by players. So if a player doesn't spawn a outpost or a garrison, you can't spawn anywhere other than headquarters. The time to kill in this game is insanely fast. Like I mentioned earlier, it's like one shot at the chest or above and generally two if it's waist or below. Now, if you get a shot in the head, something to note is you will hear a dink sound of your bullet hitting their helmet. If you do not hear that noise, you did not get a headshot. All right, moving into the best role to start as, I did mention this a little bit earlier. My personal favorite role to start as for any new player is gonna be the rifleman. 
Now, either the Rifleman or the Medic are both going to be really good rules to start as. It'll get you super comfortable with how the game operates, the way that it shifts and moves, and how you need to move as a team, etc. Just kind of learning the game, learning the maps, learning how the game works. Those two roles are going to be my personal favorite. Now, what does it look like to win? Obviously, what I'm implying here is what it looks like immediately on the battlefield. How do you know you're doing a good job? How do you know you're winning, etc.? What I'm not talking about is what the win screen looks like. Okay, I'm sure we all know what a victory looks like. It plays cool music. You know, that's cool and all. But anyways, what a win looks like is one, teamwork. Two, destroying garrisons or outposts. Three, achieving tactical objectives. Four, obviously capturing actual objectives. So knowing all of that, what's the most important here is one, you don't get immediate benefit from capturing the actual objective. However, that does incline you to win and it does give you more space to place outposts and garrisons. Now, personally for me, I would say the two most important things in the game are gonna be destroying garrisons and outposts and creating garrisons and outposts, i.e. gaining tactical objectives. So, and honestly, these two things are really even because if you can gather four tactical objectives and secure them heavily and then place garrisons and outposts there or smartly place them, this will almost guarantee you the win. Now, half of your team doing that in combination with the other half of your team, now we're talking about a perfect world here. If you had half your team thinking about tactical objectives and garrison slash outpost placement, and the other half of your team was solely focused on ruining your enemy's tactical objectives and destroying their garrisons and outposts, you would win 100% of the time. That is a guarantee, 100% of the time. The only other thing you would need to do is have one silly goose sitting on the objective or within four squares of the objective if you're playing warfare. Anyways, I kind of dragged this on a little longer than I wanted to, so moving into number three is going to be teamwork and communication. Now, it is utterly important to communicate with your team and to work with your team. It is beyond important. This game is reliant upon it. You can still have fun if you don't do it, but it is very important if you're going to want to win. Tactical objectives are just as good as the actual objective, and honestly, they're more important in my mind. That's really all I have to say about teamwork and communication, okay? I emphasize that in every single one of my Hell Let Loose videos. Rolling into number four is going to be, no pun intended, roles and loadouts. Now, I know I said I was going to elaborate on each individual role, but I want to try and keep this video as short as possible for you guys with the most amount of information. So I'm going to leave elaborating on every individual role to my roles guides video. Now, if you want to check that out, I teach you how to play as a officer, a medic, and a rifleman. I have three of those videos out right now. Now, go ahead and check it out in the information tab up above, or you can click the link in the description down below. And if I forgot to leave that link, please leave a comment and let me know because I hate it when other YouTubers do that shit, okay? So basically all I want to touch on here in number four about roles and loadouts is going to be my personal recommended best path or best role path for you to take. Now, personally for me, I started out as rifleman, moved into medic, got my shit kicked in, went back to rifleman, and then I moved into, pretty much moved into officer right away after that. I think I may have played a little bit of support or engineer in between there, but not really. I had played a lot with my friends and decided I was just ready to jump right in. And that was kind of what I did. So I really personally wouldn't recommend that. In my opinion, the best path to take is to start as a rifleman. And then eventually you'd like to end as a commander. I've played as commander, I think once, and it was anxiety inducing as fuck. So really you don't need to get to that point. But anyways, so play at least one match as rifleman. And then I would recommend you can move into just about any other role that you find interesting. If you're trying to get as comfortable as possible with the game to play as a officer or a squad leader, then I would definitely say play as a rifleman, then play as a medic, because that'll give you more coordination with how to operate within a team, and then play as either a engineer or support role. And you could probably play as just a medic for half the match, and then one of those other two for half the match, and then you're probably going to feel ready to play as officer. Now, just be aware that when you do jump into the officer role, you will now have three, kind of four, different voice chats rather than just the two that you have as a regular player. As an officer, you'll have VoIP, team chat or squad chat rather you'll have the chat from the commander and then you'll have the chat from other officers as well so keep that in mind that can get pretty burdensome pretty quick moving into number five is going to be map awareness and strategy now this one is pretty simple just learning the maps and where spawns or tactical objectives are is going to be really important 
So the only way you can really do that is by just playing, watching other people play. Just try to make this process as fun as possible so that you can kind of learn what the maps look like, where the tactical objectives are, where most teams are likely to place their garrisons and outposts at. Make sure you're watching out for wide flanks or extra wide or extra, 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 extra wide flanks. Like sometimes that really does happen. You get flanked from fucking 500 meters behind your front line and you're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, why are you even there? Now, obviously, that's more of a one-off, but definitely watch out for those wide flanks. Those are going to be really important and valuable to take advantage of if they aren't expecting you to know that it's there. If you found some value so far in these five topics that we've gone over, go ahead and drop a sub down below so I know I'm doing something right here. Rolling into number six is going to be offensive versus warfare gameplay. So really the main difference here is that when you play offensive on D-Day, it's going to be just like D-Day. And if you don't know what D-Day is, I'll explain this a little better in just a second, but I think this is kind of funny. When you play on the D-Day map on offensive and you play as American team, you will be pushing from the beach line all the way behind the lines. That is what offensive is. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, basically what I'm saying is that on offensive, depending on which team you start as, because you can play as Germany in D-Day, depending on which team you start as, you will have the entire map to capture or defend in offensive. Whereas in Warfare, the middle lane is neutral at the start of the game, and each team has two defensive widths to defend or attack against. Hopefully that makes sense, and I bet I will have photos or screenshots, rather, in, you know, overlaying. Anyways, moving on. So another thing I'd like to mention is just that you really should just focus on having fun, okay? I explained the differences, but if you prefer one over the other, just play that one. If you find the community to be better in one type than the other, then play in that one. If your friends enjoy one, but you like the other, then just try and mix it up once in a while. Try and have this part and focus it to be fun. Number seven, vehicle gameplay. I will not be going over tanks, okay? Because I haven't even gone there yet, okay? It's fucking stupid, crazy. It's so realistic. This is a realism game, but it is crazy realistic. So, what we're going to be talking about is transport versus supply trucks, and I can touch on artillery just a little bit, because I'm not really sure where else I would place that. Anyways, so, transport truck. Pretty obvious. It's a truck that is used to transport personnel. So it can carry, I believe, about 12 people, if you're counting the front seats. It might be about 10. I don't know off the top of my head. Supply trucks. Those can only carry two people, but it carries two supply crates that drop, I believe, 100 supplies. So, do's and don'ts for the transport and supply trucks. Do wait for a transport truck to fill completely at the start of a game before leaving, okay? Don't drive off immediately upon getting into a transport truck with tons of friendly players around, no matter what time of the game it is. Don't take a supply truck away from a squad leader or the commander, okay? Because they're clearly probably, hopefully, for the love of God, using it for a good purpose to drop supplies and place garrisons. Do feel free to aid your squad lead or your commander in using the supply truck. For example, if they're getting attacked, go ahead and shoot the guy that's shooting them, okay? Hopefully that helps. Number eight, tips. My personal tips for survival and combat. These are going to go pretty quick. Number one, don't run out in the open, okay? Unless, you know, nobody's there, nobody's defending it, nobody's died there recently or within the last 300 years, and, you know, you should be good to go, okay? Just make smart decisions when you're going to run out in the open, okay? But typically, you shouldn't be doing it. Try to be sneaky, which I'll go over in a second. Anyways, number two, moving with your team as much as possible. You're going to want to move with your team. Not just your squad, but your team, okay? You're going to want to move if your squad leader says, hey, commander wants us to push up and and defend the next point because we're about to capture it. Uh, he wants us to engineer some shit together. Okay, do it. Move with your team, though. If you're going to move, move at least with your squad. Okay, don't spray at long distance enemies. If you have, no matter what type of gun you have, really, you shouldn't be rapid clicking, shooting as fast as you can at the motherfucker. You should slow down, take time to aim, and make sure you get the fucking shot. Okay, especially if you're using a machine gun of any type. Any sort of automatic weapon, do not spray at long distance enemies. You will get fucked. Guaranteed. 100%. Number four, see and don't be seen. Be sneaky. Use your surroundings to your advantage. Crouch sprint 
which is a thing you can crouch and sprint make sure you're being quiet if you're in enemy territory with your squad for some fucking reason that's kind of recon's job but you know sometimes people like to do shit that's wild and off the wall or maybe you're trying to take a tactical objective that's actually a really good point so glad you brought that up anyway so be sneaky number five try and be a part of a diverse squad so that you and your team can handle diverse situations, okay? For example, having a light machine gunner to tackle close range enemies, having an engineer for structural support, having a support class for ammo and supplies, mostly just supplies, I am quite certain support doesn't carry ammo. However, riflemen carry ammo, so that's definitely useful. Having a medic for healthy pickups and less respawns so that you don't have to respawn once every 20 seconds. If your team or squad rather can clear the area of enemies, revive all your guys, boom, you don't have to respawn. And then you don't lose that tactical objective either if that's where you were at or if that's where you were heading to. And then of course, the squad leader, it's kind of a requirement. So rolling into number nine here is gonna be supporting your team. Now this is a little different than supporting your squad. Again, we're talking about the whole team here. I'm gonna want you to overly communicate, okay? I'm not saying it again to sound like an idiot. I'm saying it again because it's important, but you're also gonna wanna listen to your team as well. Now, a lot of people on VoIP just like to gurgle and scream and sound like they're dying in game because it's fun. Yeah, he moved. Yeah, he oh moved god! Faster. I got kit! No, no! <laughs> no! no! <laughs> but sometimes, you know, also you can add value through VoIP and listen and also receive value through VoIP. So just make sure you're paying attention. Next is going to be to use your equipment wisely. This can really support your team if you drop an ammo box or if you use your morphine and smoke grenades correctly as a medic. If you drop your supplies for a couple of engineers or for a squad leader trying to place a garrison immediately, like that can be clutch as fuck, okay? Make sure you use it wisely. Don't waste it. Support heavy pushes and listen to your squad leader, please, for the love of fucking God, okay? Support heavy pushes. So if your team is pushing as a team, you're all pushing as a team, push in with them. If your squad leader is suggesting to do so, if they're not saying anything, you should be like, yo, squad leader, what the fuck are we doing? You should probably ask them. Now, not every squad leader is a wise squad leader and not every commander is a wise commander either. So I say, listen to your squad leader kind of with a grain of salt. If you feel like your squad leader is sounding competent, listen to them, please, because they probably are. If they're kind of sounding stupid, try to find a way to politely bring it up and be like, hey, why do you think that would be a good idea? Why maybe we could do this instead? Or, you know, something along those lines because I can definitely understand how it would be really hard to follow a squad leader that doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. And I've personally definitely been in that situation before where playing as a squad leader, I wasn't really sure what to do. So even people like my friends weren't really listening to me. They were kind of just off doing their own thing, willy nilly, dilly bally, blah, 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 boom. You know, we didn't really get anything done because I didn't know what to do because there was a lot of weird shit going on. But anyways, so my total 10 reasons here or 10 things for how to play Hell Let Loose for beginners. We've gone over nine of them understanding the basics getting started teamwork and communication roles and loadouts map awareness and strategy offensive versus warfare gameplay vehicle gameplay tips for survival and combat my personal tips supporting your team and number 10 is going to be progression and persistence so progression and persistence the more you play the more you learn the more you learn the better you get i think you get where i'm going with that so just play the game if you like the game play it more if you like the game play it even more if you continue to like the game play it more and more okay i've kind of dropped off a little bit because i personally have felt like it's kind of dying but that's not here nor there you're here for beginner tips or whatever anyways Number two here in progression and persistence is to make sure you're decking out your character with new cosmetic unlocks as you get them because that's gonna help you enjoy the game better. And just continue working at it if there's something you wanna unlock in the game. Keep playing, get better at the game, unlock it eventually, and there you go, you got it. Other than that, stay tuned for more gaming content and we'll talk again real soon. Peace.